What's going on everybody, Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Transformers The Last Night Toys R Us exclusive Cybertron. Okay, this is just a repaint of the 2007 Primus figure from Transformers Cybertron. Or uh, what was it called in, the, in Japan? Transformers Galaxy Force, that's right. What we have here is a black, blue, and yellow ball. Spiky beach ball. Oh, and there's some nice orange in there as well. The overall planet mode is pretty good looking and is exceptionally heavy. It's real heavy. I'm honestly not sure what the front of this is supposed to be. I don't know if this is the front or this is the front. I don't think it matters really. I prefer to have the front of the unit or planet mode to be this because there's one little mini con peg right here and then the towers back here and I think this just works best. Now on the box, they say that there are four different modes for this guy. There is a planet mode, an attack planet mode, a defense mode, and the robot mode. So how do we get to those different modes? Why we have a key. If you remember my original review back in 2000 and yeah, it had to have been 2007 or 2008. This is the cyber planet key. You have the planet keys from the four different Transformers planets. Cybertron, Velocitron, Gigatron, and Jungletron. Yeah, we'll go with Jungletron. They all plugged in, and then they all sat on top of the planet mode. Okay, this thing does light up. There's a little button on the bottom, and that's it. That's all it does. That's the only light up action you get. For the planetary attack mode, the first thing we're going to do is turn it to the side and put the key in this little hole on the side and push it in and it's supposed to pop this section up and out, but obviously that is not working. So we will use a planet key instead. There we go. And we will do the same thing on the other side and I will zoom in so you guys get a better look. Just pop the key in and it pops out the guns. And then the last thing to do is to come up to the top, put the key in place, and slide it back. And that's supposed to make these sections up here flip forward. Like, well, let's try, ah, okay. It was in the wrong place to begin with. I don't know what that sound was. I don't remember the original Primus making that kind of sound. So that is his attack mode. One thing though, the one foot panel on my figure is incredibly loose. And in fact, you could see some hairline cracks in the plastic right here, but I can't zoom my camera in well enough. So yeah, this piece has a tendency to just flop down. And for a uh, figure of this price, it shouldn't. Now, I will be the first to tell you I think this attack mode is pretty darn silly. It, it's just kind of like a fan mode, of, a mode of, well, we kind of have this, so how do we use it? And yeah, so that's pretty stupid. Now, speaking of stupid, there is its defense mode, which is coming up next. So we come to the back of the planet, or what I call the front of the planet mode, flip up this tab, grab the back of the planet mode and fold it out like that. Fold those sections up and then straighten out what will become the robot mode's legs and put it down on the ground. That is its other mode. Yep, that's it. That's all it is, is just the robot kind of laying face down. This is its defense mode. Really, Hasbro? Really? This is lame. This is so lame. I think this mode was in the original packaging as well. I honestly don't remember. It was over 10 years ago. But looking at the back of the box, yeah, this is pretty much it. Oh, and the directions too. So, yeah, this is pretty dumb. And now we're going to get into the final robot mode. Make sure that this back flap is flipped all the way up. Rotate the bottom of the planet 180 degrees. Come to, to the bottom of the figure and flip out his toes. Stand the figure up like that and split the legs like so. And then we come down to the individual legs. So the first thing we're going to do is take the planet key and plug it into the side of the legs. 
and then turn them counterclockwise to rotate up some knee cannons or shin cannons. And then we can push this missile section out. And if we wanted to, we can extend this little robot arm that doesn't want to extend. There is a robot arm in here, I swear, though it is thankfully incredibly soft plastic. So I can manhandle it a little bit so it can reach out and grab somebody. So thankfully it's nice, soft, gentle plastic that I am not going to break. And we do the same thing on the other side, plug in the key and this time turn it clockwise, rotate up the guns, click it into place and then push out the missiles. And there are the legs. And finally for the chest, we'll plug the key in and push up. This is actually very, very hard to do. And we got some sounds. So one of the things we could do is we can leave the key in his chest, it glows, or we just leave it on his back. I prefer to leave it on his back. The Cybertron we end up with looks really, really good. I love this color scheme. I realize I might be in the minority here. I just love the color scheme. I think it works incredibly well for this guy. The orange though on the face with the dark blue eyes is a little bit weird. Nice redo of an already okay figure. Yes, and that is the thing with this. This is just an okay figure. It's also $150. Yeah, you heard that right. $150 for a 10-year-old figure. If it was, you know, I don't know, like a Death Saurus or something, I'd be willing to pay that kind of money. But, well, I obviously am willing to pay that kind of money because I went ahead and bought it at my local Toys R Us. I think the price is ridiculous for what you get. It was originally around 60 to 70 but that was 10 years ago also. If they could have shaved, I don't know, $30 off of it and removed the lights and sounds, I'd be much happier. The lights and sounds work okay, but you don't get much in terms of lights. You get the key that makes lights, other than the sounds you heard, which were the which were the trans which were the transformation sounds. You can't activate the lights or sounds again, unfortunately, which stinks. You really should be able to do that. Also, the issue that I had ten years ago with the figure not being able to transform without the lock, remains. Yes, you can manhandle it to get it to transform, but it goes much smoother if you have this. But if you lose this, it's not as fun. Posability-wise, he does have some posability in the arms, and his fingers are exceptionally posable, which I find ironic. Head is on a swivel, but it is very tight. And the legs do bend, and there is a thigh swivel, so there is that. But let's face it, you have pretty much an entire planet of kibble hanging off a transformer. So you're not going to get the best poses in the world. And the other problem is his feet are floppy. Well, at least his one foot is. You can get some meh poses, but as you all know, I stink at posing figures, so... I'm not even going to bother. The other accessory that he comes with are two missiles. I normally leave them out because I end up shooting myself in the face. And for those wondering, here is Amazon exclusive Unicron next to Toys R Us exclusive Primus. As you can see, Unicron is significantly larger. One thing that they do share in common is they have gimmicks that you need a separate piece for. Unicron has a chest opening and blaster gimmick that you need a minicon for, any Minicon will do, and Primus, well, he's got the key. So they are brothers in the fact that you need another thing to make them do something. And one last comparison for you guys, here they are both in planet mode. You can see that Unicron has this huge divot in the front of his planet mode for the Minicon, which, wait, where did I put it? Oh no, the Minicon has escaped. There we go. I still think that's really stupid, but we have the Egg Planet Minicron, Minicron, yes, the Egg Planet Unicron, and then the Beach Ball, Spiky Beach Ball Primus, or Cybertron. Over the years, this mold has grown on me considerably. I remember when I first had it, I hated this thing. And now that I'm 
10 years older, it's all right. It's not worth $150, though. But it's otherwise fine. If you guys can find it on sale for, you know, like 60 it, I think it would be worth picking up. Again, I love the color scheme. That's the real reason I picked this figure up. Is because I just like the color. I like the look of the figure. It just works for me. And I know for a lot of you out there, it doesn't. And that's fine. You don't have to buy it. And I was lucky. I randomly ran into this at my local Toys R Us. Just completely and utterly randomly found it. And I'm like, eh, should I buy it? And I did. It was the same day that I found the Bull Rider Megazord, oddly enough. It looks like that Toys R Us got a, got a truck in or something. The overall feel of the figure is odd. I'm not going to lie. It is odd. It is really weird that Hasbro is, whoops, releasing a figure from 10 plus years ago that's an exclusive. It is very, very strange. A store exclusive. An overpriced store exclusive. It just, it's so strange. I, I wish they didn't, but at the same time, I'm glad I've got a Primus that's got all these funky colors. So at the end of the day, I actually do like this figure quite a bit now. It's just fun and stupid, and that's fine. And especially in this day and age, sometimes that's really all you want. So gang, I hope you have enjoyed this video review. As always, I am Vault Matrix. I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.